going to be recording this so for anyone else who's going to wasn't able to make it so yeah so that's a that's a bit about me um i'm going to hand over to matt now uh, he's going to do a bit of a quiz with us and then sebastian's going to speak and we'll have a bit of q a at the end and then a bit more of a quiz and then we'll wrap up so um should be a fun hour so over to you matt yeah, sounds good. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, just before we kick off the, the star of the show, Sebastian, I thought we'd, we'd break the ice with a little a little World Cup quiz, um, which I'll share on my screen now. Yeah, so I'm going to bring up five questions. Um, and the first person to answer each, you can answer in any particular order, and we'll announce the uh, each one as they get correctly. If you just type into chat, um, we'll monitor it and see who gets it correct. Um, the person that gets a correct answer for each question first will win a prize. Uh, so yeah, quick five minute exercise and a chance to win some some free swag. So, so yeah, feel free to to type in the chat whenever you uh, whenever you fancy answering anyone. We have our first. We have our first winner for question one. Congratulations, Martha Reina. Those players are Messi, Ronaldo, uh, Ochoa, and Guardado. Good guesses, but still no no correct answers for before yet. Sebastian, you got any ideas? So I do not have any ideas, but I do have the data uh, <laughs> <laughs> to cheat a bit. <laughs> Don't be shy to have a guess. Yeah, I'll give uh, Francisco Alonso can can that. He's given two answers from the two, but um, I'll give I'll give you Costa Rica. Costa Rica is the correct answer, and Reese Chambers gets number four, which is yeah Hutchinson for Canada. So just number number three and number five to get. Oh uh, yeah, congratulations, Craig Booth. Number five is Senegal. All the data is from FB Ref, so. Uh, take it up with them if uh, anybody has any uh, issues with the answers. So I think, yeah, just just the teams not to get caught offside in the first two games. Fortunately, uh, Italy didn't qualify for this uh, World Cup, so. Have we got any correct answers for number three yet? No. Might have to give a clue soon. Uh, we've got one correct answer. Australia is one of the teams. Reese again. <laughs> That's very true, Jimmy. They haven't been caught offside. You're correct. Um, I won't accept those technicalities, <laughs> though, unfortunately. <laughs> one more team to get. It's uh, a European team. A quick clue. They've got a very good striker. Poland is correct. I think Reese oh, just got that one as well. I was hoping you weren't referring to Portugal. So I'm glad it was. <laughs> no, yeah. congratulations, all the right answers. We'll uh, we'll tally them up and we'll uh, we'll get some swag sent to you. 
Do we have an answer for number five? Who got that? Yeah, uh, we did. Um, one sec. It was it was Reese again. We got Hutchinson, Atiba Hutchinson from Canada. Wasn't that number four? Number Sorry, number four. Yeah, number five was Senegal. Craig, Craig Senegal. Bouffier. Is that Craig? Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> cool. Thanks for playing along. I'll stop okay, sharing cool. now. Great, just giving us answers down. Brilliant. Okay, so back to me. Um, I get to introduce our um, guest speaker today, uh, Sebastian Castu. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing your name right or wrong, so you're going to have to help me out there <laughs> close enough. Hopefully. Um, so Sebastian works for Palmer. He's, uh, he'll talk you through a bit of his history uh, inside and outside of football. He's worked elsewhere in France as well. Um, and yeah, does all sorts of, uh, he's a lead data and analytics there and um, has been a, a around for a while. And we're doing all sorts with them, all sorts of data sources from up to StatsBomb, Wimu, Club Elo, Y Scout, looking at scouting performance, medical tactical performance, discussing XG and what's you know what's most important, what leads to our rankings, all sorts of things, interesting things going on. So very excited to see what you've got for us today. Um, and yeah, without further ado, over to Sebastian. If you've got any questions uh, for for him, um, please just put that in the um, Q and A and then we'll get to that uh, towards the end. So yeah, over to you. Thank you, Ryan. Um, all right, just showing my screen right now. Is everything okay? Okay. Um, well, thank you um, very much uh, for the introduction. Uh, thank you for uh, having me here. Uh, I've followed the Tableau user groups uh, a few years ago. It's a, it's a real pleasure. To be uh, to be part of it um, today. Um, so let me just start by quickly introducing myself. Um, uh, so I'm Sebastian. I'm the um, head of data and analytics uh, at Palma Calcio um, in Italy. Um, quick uh, background. Um, so a few years ago now, and when I'm looking at the years, I'm like too long ago. I was a data science uh, intern for the French. Um, Rugby Union, uh, working on the impact of uh, training load and, and game load um, over non-muscular injuries. Um, a, a nice project that's been continued uh, by a colleague uh, for his thesis. Um, then I moved on uh, out of the, of the sports industry, uh, working for a big consulting firm um, uh, as a retail and luxury data scientist. And that's really where I got to learn um, a lot about um, about data, and, and we'll go over it later. But uh, um, luxury and retail are quite advanced industries uh, in terms of um, analytics, uh, while sport is a bit uh, lagging behind. Um, after that, um, created um, my own uh, company, uh, Data for Sports. Been working uh, in France um, and abroad uh, with different clubs about their data problems, um, building experience in, uh, in um, physical data, um, as well as, as, as tactical um, scouting and, and medical, which are the four pillars uh, we're working on. And it, it, it's really what made me want to continue uh, in, um, in the sport, wanting to get back in and continue in the sports industry is, the, var the var variety of um, topics um, that one can cover. Uh, teams always have a thousand questions uh, and unfortunately not enough uh, people, uh, skills, and sometimes unfortunately data um, to answer them. Starting in, in January, I joined um, Parma Calcio uh, in Italy uh, in, in second division, uh, the oldest, uh, people might remember Parma as a, as a, as a great team. Uh, now it's a good team, uh, but still uh, not as good as it was uh, 20 years ago. And I started as the data scientist, which quickly turned into data architect, data engineer, data scientist, uh, data analyst, and 
really data and, and whatever you want to put um, at the end. Um, right now we've got a um, machine learning uh, specialist working with us uh, as well. But um, yeah, for the past 11 months, it was data, put whatever you want uh, at the end and um, it was yours truly. And um, so permaculture, uh, how data and analytics work at permaculture. Um, data analytics are a unit inside the performance and uh, analytics department. In that department, we've got so under the same um, the same chief performance and analytics officer, uh, Mathieu Lacombe, uh, who was a, a former uh, PSG. Um, we handle sports science, nutrition, strength and conditioning, psychology, game analysis, um, and finally data um, and analytics, which is the big topic of the um, of the presentation. Um, each of those units except data and analytics um, are declined in in the different teams that we have um, so we have the first team sports scientists we've got um, academy sports scientists we've got a woman first team woman sports scientist and kind of the same for um for the five uh, first um five first function five first units um, data and analytics, it's uh, a bit different because we do not have a data scientist first team and a data scientist um, academy. Um, um, personally, I think it makes no sense to be structured with data scientists a bit everywhere. Um, but we've got a data and analytics um, team that works for a whole um, a wide perimeter of users um, in different teams, uh, the first team, the youth team, the women team, uh, as well as uh, senior leadership, um, and for scouts, for doctors, uh, etc., as well. So it's it's more centralized uh, rather than um, exploding in, in, in the different teams. The performance and analytics. So the analytics uh, part is really focused. Um, on three, is built on three values. Um, first thing is we want what we do to be entirely scalable. Um, when I started in, in, in January, the first month, a month and a half was dedicated to building um, the architecture uh, because it was not a white page when I arrived, but, but not so far from that. Um, and so how do you build an architecture that is going to serve at the same time five teams uh, in Parma, uh, plus um, so our um, president and owner uh, is launching a um, franchise in the US League, second division uh, in the US. Um, so how do you do something that is scalable? Um, without costs uh, exploding um, within and outside of the club. With really the idea that the same data that you put in must provide the same insights at the end. The second, the second um, value pillar that we have is we are here to build an asset that is going to last hopefully longer than any of us um, at the club. Um, we already changed coaches um, uh, twice in almost 12 months. Um, so that's gonna stay longer than them, um, but that's also going to stay longer than me probably, or um, my boss or my colleagues. Um, and to do so, we need to have something that is very transparent in terms of what we do so that when someone comes in um they know like when a coach has a question etc he knows what we're doing it has to be well documented because when we have someone joining the team on the data team um we need them to be up to speed quickly um we cannot onboard them for a month explaining them everything we do so we are keeping 
um, a well-documented uh, knowledge base, uh, even though it's it's not as up to date as it should, um, but transparent, documented, and the, the the last thing is because we want people to be able to dedicate their time on building new stuff uh, because that's where the fun is. Uh, it's not running the business. Um, everything we do, and I, I really insist, everything we do is fully automated, or at least the finality, the finality is that it, it needs to be fully automated. Right now, when we've got sports scientists wanting a report, they don't need to come to us anymore. They can directly drop the data and get the report. When, um, our, when the game is over, our coach and video analyst automatically receive within a few minutes after the end of the game, the game report via email and via WhatsApp. So it's, it's really, really something that, that's very important for us um, because it allows us to, to keep, keep moving forward uh, instead of getting stuck running the same reports every day. The last thing is we want to build fast and we want to iterate and improve fast. And what that means um, is that we are building most of the tools we're using at the club. Um, so we got rid of um, AMSs, for instance, we have no AMS. Uh, we got rid of um, analytics tools um, powered by providers uh, such as, and that it, it, I'm not throwing stones um, because they do a good work. It's just, we prefer building internally, uh, but like Stasium IQ, uh, et cetera, we are no, no longer um, using that. Instead, we prefer to take a, a, a week, two weeks, a month, month and a half, building stuff uh, and delivering customized, tailor-made um, analytics and insights to the people who need them um, in the way uh, they want it. So that, that, that's something really important, even though it means sometimes, um, well, cutting uh, technologies um, and um, breaking habits um, and sometimes lowering the quality of the final product uh, at first, but it allows us to build expertise in what we do. The three, so now that we've seen the three values that, that, we, that we want to, to rely on, um, the three things we do is um, build and maintain a single source of trust. Um, we have data coming from all over. We are buying uh, tons of data. We're producing tons of data. Um, we need to make sure that whenever we need to access this data, whenever we need to do a report, the data we build on is reliable. Um, too many times you see reports, and not only in the football industry, in all industries, you see data, the same metric, the same notion, um, built and rebuilt, and it gives two different outcomes. That is not something that, that we want. We want to have one single source of trust, and then we move from there. The second job, of course, uh, is to build uh, on-demand insights um, and analysis um, from how our teams built in terms of Fruster uh, globally, uh, what drives the performance uh, of the teams, um, what would be the impact of search and search decision, how can we on-demand um, and in one shot, in a few days, how can we help the stakeholders take um, inform the decision so that they take a, an informed decision and not just a, a wild guess um, or, um, or a get based um, guess? And the last thing is well, develop what is 90% of the usage of data uh, for us automatized uh, tools and dashboards. Um, so where, as I said, our scouts can go directly and find the player uh, that they want <clears throat> and 
get the latest uh, data on them, where sports scientists can go and um, push their, their GPS data and automatically get their training reports where match analysts don't have to do a thing except open the WhatsApp at the end of the game to download um, their report in, in PDF. And how can we help a large panel of users um, solve their, uh, their everyday needs? Quick focus on, um, on the architecture, um, and then we'll move uh, over to, um, to Tableau and how we use Tableau. Um, we, as I said, we automate uh, everything, uh, meaning automatically we go and download data from our providers, from our GPS, from our scouts um, report, from everything, videos, et cetera. We automatically go get them. Um, and then we have a simple but effective approach of storing it in our data lake, loading it with an ETL into our databases. And from there, um, we power tableaus and uh, we train models, um, et cetera, et cetera. It, it's, very simple. Um, it is very cost effective, and yet it is very powerful and very useful on a daily basis. <clears throat> uh, a few examples of um, things we do um, in Tableau. Um, so right now we have a, a Tableau guy uh, who is uh, pretty good and who is the chief performance and, and analytics officer. Um, so he is the one in charge of building tableaus. We're currently hiring uh, for uh, for this position of data viz specialist, and we build dashboards for our senior management, our president, uh, our managing director of sports, um, or CFO, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, and stuff that matters for them, not that matters for us. So either they have a need or we think that there is something that um, they're going to like and we can easily using Tableau and that uh, reliable architecture that I've mentioned before, um, build stuff, build dashboards, build insights, and then automate the refresh. So those are three examples of, of stuff. Um, we do, uh, who are players and how long they have in the contract. Uh, so we know if the situation is critical for some positions, for some players, etc. That's the one we have on the left. <coughs> um, who in the team is getting the most playing time? Are they young players, um, all players, etc. That's the one uh, in the middle. And so again, we can see if we align the strategy um, of the team. Uh, and monthly KPIs that we send over, um, always about squad creation and booster creation um, for our senior management. We also work, of course, um, on the scouting uh, side um, for um, for a very simple simple reason. Um, it, it's the department. Uh, in football, where uh, they are the highest uh, stake uh, for transfers. Uh, even in second division, you talk about millions, etc. So you want to make sure you're not um, taking a decision you're going to regret um, a few months after. Um, while there is no bulletproof uh, method, uh, we like to provide some information uh, to our scouts and, and our presidents before um, before a transfer, uh, using data source data we buy, um, as well as um, models we build, um, we build in house. We also scout um, so the same data can be used to do data scout at scale um, from thirty plus thousand players. Um, we send every week information about 
uh, young players, um, et cetera, uh, because we want to uh, be ahead of the curve when it comes to, to use our strategies. <clears throat> Last but not least, um, for, um, for dashboards, uh, we power, um, and then we'll move to a few stuff we are working on right now. Um, after each game, all of the teams from our under 16 to our first team, men and women, receive the same report uh, because they are followed by the same data provider. Um, and that gives us common ground to identify uh, patterns uh, in performance. So right now it's not that important, but by doing so we train our use match analyst to the same processes, methodologies uh, and techniques as our um, first team video analyst when it comes to data, uh, when it comes to uh, everything uh, else as well, but that's not my, um, my role, it's, it's our head uh, match analyst, uh, video analyst uh, role. But when it comes to data, they all read the same report. So they all speak the same data, um, which means um, if tomorrow we need to bring someone in the first team from our youth uh, sector, they're going to be already educated to that. Um, and that is very important because it ensures we always have people that know what we're talking about and we don't have to do the education um, every time when it comes to when it comes to data. Those dashboards um, are designed by our um, lead video analysts uh, in link with the coaching staffs with the data team, etc. So it's not something that we want to, sh to show them. It's something that they asked for. Um, that changes everything when it comes to usage because they're the one asking for it. They're the one who built it. We're just here to put the numbers um, in the right place. And so we know they are uh, looking at it um, after each game. And proof is last game, we had a mistake in one of our reports. Um, we received the notification literally 30 seconds after the report was sent, prove that uh, we do have people uh, reading a report. And that is great. Those reports, uh, we make them evolve uh, every now and then, um, right now a lot, um, because it's, it's still quite new. Uh, it's been only three months that the season um, really started. Um, and so we update them. Um, every time. Uh, the latest um, announcement that we've made, and I'm, I'm going to show it, is integrating directly the video to our dashboards. Uh, so not in the PDF version, of course, but um, on the Tableau uh, server version. Um, our analysts can directly go and see, um, and see data and video at the same time. So that's one of our, our reports. Um, it's very simple. Where did the team shoot? Was the shot on target or not? Um, that's the color. Was it a goal or not? That's the little star. And the size is what was the expected goal um, associated. And so we see that we can directly go and check the video from a shot that was a um, promising shot, it was in target, but there was no goal. Um, why did that happen? And as soon as you click um, on the event, you have the video starting and you can go over and over um, events um, post game, but also pre game. So if we want to look at all of an opponent's shot before or um, that led to goals, that led to um, whatever, um, high expected goal situations, 
we can directly go and synchronize the video um, with that. Uh, we can do the same for um, passes. We can do the same for <clears throat> any type of event, um, any type of event really. Um, and that really helps them because today um, in football, data does only plays a little part uh, of it. People are much more used to working with um, videos. Um, and so being able to, to bridge the gap between data and video, between something that they don't really know and something that they have for some 15 years of experience with um, really helps drive adoption uh, from, from those professionals. Um, so those are the things that um, we do. We just released the, um, um, the um, video in Tableau uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, so it's, it's still, um, still some work. Um, now we are uh, expanding what we do um, and the capability uh, that we're gonna have to to use uh, Tableau and those videos. Um, so it's supposed to be animated, but anyway, um, those kind of videos where you see teams that are in controls, um, that are in control of parts of the pitch, et cetera. Um, those videos, we are working on synchronizing them as well with our even data and our video data. So instead of just, do you want to see the video? our video analysts, our coaches, et cetera, will have the possibility to look at different kind of videos we're gonna to propose to them. Um, do you want to see pitch control um, and the videos side by side, just one, just the other? Um, do you want, um, do you want to see whose player um, dominates the area? Uh, next to him, um, and we also use the same approach to determine pressing and counter pressing. Um, and so in Tableau, um, we're going to be able to automatically, so from the data, automatically detect patterns and types of events, put that data in Tableau, and then link all of that with the video while always remaining in the same. Um, in the same environment, in the same tool. And so really building um, one-stop shop um, when it comes to data uh, analytics and, um, and video. That's it for me. Uh, that's how we, um, how we use uh, Tableau um, at Parma, uh, our future um, developments. Uh, we've got, uh, uh, million ideas, but uh, not enough time uh, to solve them. Uh, I guess we're just uh, another football club. Thanks, Sebastian. That was really great. We've got a ton of questions coming in, so let's just dive straight into and get through as many of those as, as we can get in. I'm just going to do it in order um, and then try group some as, as we go as well. So. Um, you can probably read the Q&A as well yourself, Sebastian, but I'll read it out to you and for our audience. So, Sebastian, you mentioned how your role started as a data scientist and then branched out into many data roles. Do you think there's a common thing or do you think that roles that are being created are more specialized in teams, organizations everywhere? Um, so, um, right now, um, teams are, in, in, in soccer, teams are, too small to really have a difference. Um, I don't see any team having a data architect, a data engineer, a few data scientists. I mean, there are some Manchester City, uh, for instance, in the City Group um, and other big, uh, big teams. But the average is one person, two person, sometimes three in the department. Um, so right now in football, um, I think you need like the um, one man does it all, um, but as the teams are structured, um, it's going to be specialized like it's going like 
it is in every other um, every other industries. Um, just to 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 give a, a concrete example. So as I uh, as I mentioned, I'm not advertising uh, here, but we are hiring someone uh, to work on Tableau, and that's like it's. It used to be something that was kind of shared uh, among our skills. Now we really want someone specialized in that. Um, and I think that's how it's going to evolve uh, over time uh, as it grows. You are on mute, Ron. It sounded very interesting. Had, I did had, not hear. had to be once at least. Um, so yeah, uh, Sebastian, I'll, I'll throw that link in um, on, on our chat as well. I think we had another link in there on the on the chat, uh, just in case anyone here is interested within that. So um, yeah, I think it's a good space for it. So the next question is a bit, there's a couple of them just going to kind of group together a bit. So um, uh, Constantinos wants to know, how do you automate this procedure providing the data each department wants? And then uh, how do you ask, how do you, how do you get the data from, a, do you get the data from APIs or pass XML files? And finally, I think we had someone ask at the end, uh, what technology do you use for the ETL? So if you can just kind of cover those off. Sure. Um, so um, uh, I'll start by the, um, by the last question because uh, it's much better for the flow of answers. Um, we decided um, when the department started to um, work well with a few uh, providers. Um, so for technology providers, we kind of have Two, when it comes to data side, who work on AWS and Tableau, that's it. Um, and so we use kind of AWS's tools um, for more or less uh, everything from uh, automatizing um, what we do, um, think uh, Lambda functions, think uh, Crohn's, think orchestrator, et cetera. Um, and same, so Data Lake is AWS S3, um, ETL is AWS Glue, database is AWS Redshift. So it's, it's, it's really like we really leverage uh, a few technologies, um, but we try to, to get the most, um, the most out of them. When it comes to how do you get um, data um, from API or XML file, um, kind of depends. Um, but uh, most of the time APIs, except from providers uh, such as um, Opta, uh, for which we are still uh, on the legacy uh, system. And so we port um, their XML files. And we do that automatically and blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, brilliant. Um, so, Next question is specific on what, what is noise feed? Um, so noise feed is uh, an Italian company uh, that provides information that defines, um, that, that centralizes information uh, about player injury. And so it gives us the possibility to know with a bit more accuracy that other information we can find online, um, player injury history. So it's just very specific to a use case. Um, uh, and uh, it's one of the providers that we have. <laughs> Brilliant. The, uh, uh, the, we love the video um, on embedded into the Tableau dashboard. We thought that was brilliant. It's been a, a bit of chat about that. Um, so uh, there's a few questions. If, if you're syncing the video in Tableau, um, also, is it hosted on Huddle or YouTube? Um, um, and then that also that at, at times things was a little slow to load so do you think that's because of tableau or because of the internet connection um okay um so uh where we store the videos um as i said uh work with a few but try to work well we leverage aws's capabilities so we do not store them on youtube we do not store those videos on huddle um we do um we, we store them internally uh, in our AWS's account. Um, and um, yeah, then we just reference the video um, and the event and the timestamp that we want. We clip that video and um, we play the video clip. So it's, it's really not rocket science um, to do, 
um, but it's definitely an amazing tool. Uh, it's very useful and, um, and uh, it's a great uh, capability uh, of Tableau to be able to uh, do it right now. Yeah, and just within that, how do you deal with the video size issue? I noticed you had a parameter there that set to like five seconds before and 15 seconds after. Yep. How, how long is the duration itself? And it's like another five seconds itself. Is that how you deal with the video size issues? So does it um, take too long to load? So um, that's not how we work with it. Um, um, that's how we work with it. So basically, we've got the entire video and we cut the parts we want on the fly. Um, so we don't pre-cut um, all the clips. So we have one feed. And we, when we say, I want five seconds before, 15 seconds after, we just go and take five seconds before the event, 15 seconds after, clip it and return the clip. Um, so that's, that's how we do it. That's probably one of the reasons why it's a bit uh, slow to load uh, the video the first time. Now what we've seen is um, it, it takes, so it was slower also because um, screen was sharing, which takes, um, which takes some of, like, create some delays, um, but also, uh, other than that, loading the first event of a game takes a second, a second and a half, and then the subsequent events uh, go very smoothly. So, um, yeah, it's it's not a problem of 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 Tableau. It's probably more a problem of how we work, uh, how how we deal with those videos. Um, but it works really well, and it's really neat when it's uh, integrated. And how are you tagging it to go and fetch the right thing? Is that is that a uh... Um, um, URL parameter, or, or is that <clears throat> embedded in the data? Uh, so data or timestamped. Um, so we have the zero second uh, of the video, which corresponds to that zero second of our even data. And so then for every data, we know we just need to take, if it's 10 minutes and five seconds, that's 605th second minus five plus 15. So that's between 600 and 620 seconds go and grab just that part and return it as um, as a file. Okay, brilliant. I think that's cleared that up really nicely for us. Um, so <laughs> here, uh, do you have any other dashboards in any other software products, not in Tableau, and like what technologies um, are you presenting data in other than Tableau? We do not. Um, we do not because we so far, we did not need uh, anything else. Um, um, but other than that, we know if needed, um, what our fallback are going to be. And uh, it's going to be either or shiny or. Oh, lost you for a second there, Sebastian. Sorry? Oh, there we go, you're back. We just lost oh. you for a second, just, just the last three or four seconds. Um, so uh, if needed, it's going to be R Shiny or um, Python Dash um, because it's the things we have experience with. Uh, but to be fair, in a year, we, we didn't need those um, so far. So um, we, we, we really like, and probably also because we do have a bit of experience um, with Tableau, both Matthew and I from our previous, um, previous experiences. Um, but uh, yeah, no need at the moment. Cool. We're running a little low on time with the, the rest of the quiz coming as well. So we're just going to do a cup, bundle a couple more questions together. We might not get to everyone. So apologies if we don't, but a couple more for you, Sebastian. You're not, not off the hook yet. Um, so one question, a couple of questions are a little bit, a bit about growing uh, in this space as a professional. So this question here is, um, since this data is amazing for a freelancer, what would be the best source of such event data? And how could one get in touch with teams to work on such projects to be part of the data analysis team? Um, thank you for showcasing the amazing data and the visualizations. And then another person says, where would you say time is best spent for upskilling? Um, what would you say are the most important skills to learn? Um, so I'll, uh, um, I'll try to be brief uh, so we can cover uh, the rest of the questions. Um, uh, how could we get open data? Uh, there are um, blogs and articles um, about data sources, um, open data data sources. I know StatsBombs provide some for even data. I know Metrica provides some from tracking data. 
Um, there are tons of open data, FBREF, uh, transfer mark, et cetera. So data sources uh, are available today. Um, not necessarily on the match we want, but they are available. Um, now, how to get in touch with data and uh, analytics teams. Um, honestly, today, most of the people I know working in data um, are plugged on their email or on LinkedIn. Um, go ahead, send them a LinkedIn message, uh, send them a, uh, an email. Um, and um, I'm pretty sure, um, so I know they get solicited a lot, but I'm pretty sure they'll take the time uh, answering you. Great, that's great, Sebastian. Um, so uh, <clears throat> another question here is what, uh, what are your favorite footballing statistics right now? Ooh, uh, there are a lot of them. Um, um, huh, how to answer that question? Uh, what's your, without... what's your favorite metric? Um, so right now we, um, because it's the stuff uh, we are working on, um, we are really into um, analyzing the performance um, of a player and how a player impacts uh, the team when he plays versus um, when he doesn't play. Um, so that's one of um, one of the main things we're working on. Uh, there's one out of what I've presented uh, based on the uh, who controls what part of the pitch uh, situation is the impact of one player uh, and his run um, on the space created for the team. Um, because there are some players that run and create space while some others run for nothing. And how do you separate them um, so that you spend more time looking at the players that run for something? Brilliant. Yeah. I mean, that, those are some things that I, I lay awake thinking about at night as well, like these, those different statistics and how you could measure um, impact of a performance of a player versus, you know, expected result for teams and things like that. So, yeah, I think that's definitely a good one. Um, uh, another great question here. What's the biggest impact you've had on performance that you're aware of? So that's um, always a tricky one, um, like uh, explaining um, the RI of um, data and analytics uh, in sports. Um, we didn't make any signings. We didn't win any game. Uh, and uh, we didn't train uh, anyone to be more performant uh, on the pitch. So um, now that you're here, um, once you've said that, it's really more about helping the guys that are working with the athletes uh, every day. Um, in some teams, even helping the athletes uh, themselves. I know some athletes are really into data. Um, and yeah, it's, it's about providing them value. Um, so it's tough to quantify how did you impact performance? Uh, did we win the last game we won because of data? Honestly, no, we didn't. Um, did it help um, the video uh, analysts? Did it help strength and conditioning coach? Did it help our sports scientists? Um, the work that we do, um, um, well, I like to hope that, that it does. Uh, I'm pretty sure that it does. So that's more how I would quantify the impact. Do you ever get a coach coming up to you and saying, I was leaning one way with a certain decision or picking a certain player or doing this kind of thing, but having looked at the data, I've gone a different way and I'm actually feel a lot more comfortable now. Do you have those sorts of conversations happen at times? So not with um, not with coaches, but um, but when it comes to scouting, uh, I know it's it's uh, an important part um, when you've got you reduced your your options to a few players or to more, depending on when you arrive in the pipeline of decision. Um, knowing, being able to have tangible information on on, on what the player really does uh, rather than what we think or what we saw uh, um, he does, uh, I know is really helpful as well as being able to bring information about his injuries, for instance, um, because that's not something that is widely available. Um, and being able to have a cockpit centralized on not yet giving you a 360 view of the player, but that's, that's the long-term goal. Um, that, that definitely has an impact on, on, on transfers, et cetera. Great. Um, I imagine, as well, we were talking about this earlier as well, that they, there's a big variation in, in professionals and in industry as to their appetite for data. So I imagine you have some coaches come in and they're really hungry for a lot of these things and other ones just don't 
give you much feedback or don't seem to take it as seriously. So I'm not so we, we're lucky at Parma because the coach is uh, into it. Um, he's interested. So we are able, I mean, we can go to him, present him what we do. Uh, he gives feedback about what he likes, what he dislikes, et cetera. So we really have that kind of uh, good relationship where we can build together um, and ensure that we don't waste time building something that's useless. And in the meantime, making sure that what, what are his priorities are also our priorities. Great. Um, my <clears throat> advice, Sebastian, is not to, check the, not to check the comments in the chat at the moment, um, uh, if, you, if you want to avoid any bad news. Um, but yeah, I think it might uh, just be some, some good news in the last few seconds, though, sir. So. Oh, okay, yeah. good. Uh, for that's, friend, not, for that, that's not going to change, though, that we're going to be first of the group. And so I really appreciate that. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, we'll um, pop over to just run the quiz quickly. I I'll encourage you if your question didn't get answered, just uh, as Sebastian opened the door there to, to bother him on LinkedIn and, uh, and uh, reach out to him. And uh, I'm sure he'll get back to you. Thank you so much. That was brilliant. Brilliant, Sebastian. Thank you. Didn't want to catch you. So, Matt, I think we've got a couple of minutes left. Do you want to throw those questions up? Yeah, yeah. Thanks very much, Sebastian. I especially like the part where you had to adjust the squad age for Buffon because he's because he's such an outlier. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, uh, that, that, made me that is that is very true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'll just follow the the same format as before. We'll just do a quick couple of minutes. Um, type the number of a question and um, uh, the answer in the chat, and uh, we'll we'll send some more swag for the winners. Um, so yeah, for, first question, which Premier League player has accumulated the most XG this season without scoring a single goal? Um, which of the lowest tier domestic league to be represented at a World Cup? So in terms of a, the football pyramid, what is the, the lowest league that a player is playing in? Um, basically, who is the most experienced team at the World Cup with a total of uh, 1,357 caps between them? Um, and who is the only outfield player over 40 years old who has made an appearance in Europe's top five leagues? And which team in Europe's top five leagues have scored the least amount of goals this season? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. we have an answer for question one. Bamford is correct. Patrick Bamford of Leeds. Uh, XG of 4.1 uh, without, without scoring a single goal. <clears throat> Isn't the best. So congratulations, Giovanni. On a side note, while we wait for uh, answers, um, for number three, we've actually seen at Palma that it is a huge driver um, of performance uh, for teams. Teams that keep playing together for a long time tend to be more performant, even though players are not the best. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's, that's good to know. And yeah, the correct answer is, is Belgium for that one. So congratulations, Liam. Yeah, just finding just just going for FBRF and getting these these random stats is very enjoyable. So could uh, could spend all day on it. I'll give you a clue for number four. The player plays for Betis, and number five, looking for an Italian team. And number two is a home nation, but not England. Yeah, Joaquin is the correct answer, as is Sampdoria. I think Giovanni just got there first before Alex and Khan got Sampdoria. Yeah, number two, um, yeah, number two uh, is a team that recently went out of the World Cup, unfortunately, for me. Broke your heart, didn't it? Did indeed. Wales is correct. And yeah, the... The lowest league is, is League Two. We actually have two players from League Two in our team, which goes to some way to explaining why we are out in the first round. Yeah, so I think that's all your crutches, everyone. Thanks for playing along. And thanks very much, Sebastian, for a great presentation. That was really, really good. And thanks to everyone else for, for, for joining as well. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Thanks, thank everyone. everyone. And we're looking forward to seeing you again soon. Do be in touch. And uh, yeah, if you if you've got anything that you want to present, um, reach out to us on the on the on the tug group. Um, and yeah, we're looking forward to the next one we're having soon. Um, enjoy the rest of the World Cup.
uh, good luck to France for, for you, Sebastian, and uh, I'll see you all soon. Thank you, Thanks, guys.